Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. Today we're going to be um, trying to, to understand the concept of ionization energy a little bit more clearly by introducing a new type of conceptual model called the men in the well model. Um, it'll seem a little bit strange at first um, and a little bit um, a bit of a, a difficult analogy to begin with but you'll see that it will make us help us make sense of some of the things we've seen so far. So just to quickly recap some of the trends that you've observed in ionization energy so far based on the previous activity. Okay, so the first thing that we notice is that the electrons are not equally easy to remove, that it does get more difficult or, you know, more energy is needed um, from the first ionization energy all the way up to however many electrons we've got to remove, you know, whether it's two or 10 or 20. Okay, so that by the time we get to the end, these ones are incredibly hard to remove. Okay, another thing that we've noticed is that this increase in difficulty is not linear, that it seems to step up. Um, you know, you kind of get a couple that are similarly easy and then it jumps up to another level and then it's similarly easy and then it jumps up to another level with the last two always being significantly harder to remove than any other. And that also leading us to um, positing or, you know, kind of proposing that there are actually groups of electrons um, that ba based on this information. And that, you know, two in, in the, the kind of the last two being a group and then eight and then eight and so on. Okay, and so what we're going to do is use a model to try and explain how these groups might work. Okay, and so the way that we're going to do that is that we are going to use an analogy, imagining like there are men in a well. Okay, so like an actual physical well, men trapped down in the bottom of a well. Okay, and that the, um, so um, this is our well, and then we've got physical men down the bottom. Okay, and the idea is that the men, you'll see at the moment I've only got one, but the men represent our electrons. And the well represents the energy needed to remove the electrons, that is, to get the men out. Okay, so if you were actually physically trying to get trapped men out of, out of a well, the deeper the well is, the harder that's going to be. Okay, if the well is very shallow, then it will be quite easy. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw some diagrams illustrating some wells and some men stuck at the bottom of them to try and, and make sense of the trends that we noticed. Okay, so let's, we're going to draw five diagrams as we go. All right, but so this is just giving you, giving you the idea. Okay, so let this first diagram, let me just tidy up the well here a little bit. Okay, let this represent hydrogen. Okay, so hydrogen has one electron. So it's one man stuck down a well. And there's a certain amount of energy involved in getting him out. Um, and so, actually I might even, in your diagram, to give ourselves somewhere to go, let's make the well not very deep. Okay, so we've got one electron. Um, and so the energy that's involved in getting him out. Okay, now, Let's now, I mean, that's that's kind of establishing the premise. Let's now have a look at helium. Okay, now helium has two electrons. Okay, so this is a little E minus to, to represent electrons. Now, what we can notice from the data is first, there's two things. Now we have two men at the bottom and that our well is deeper than it was before. Okay, because it's actually that the energy that's involved in getting them out is harder than it used to be. Okay, so we can draw our well just a little bit higher. So, um, so the well is deeper, more energy needed. Okay, now how can we use this concept to account for the fact that one electron is easier to remove than the other? So one is easier and, then the, and the last one is the hardest. Okay, so let's imagine this, like you had two men actually stuck down a well. And the idea is that one man can help boost the other one to be a bit closer you know, if we just kind of, if you forgive my fairly rubbish drawing skills, okay, imagine that he could actually boost that man up to get him closer to the surface to make it easier to get out. Okay, so he is, a, he, and a certain amount of energy is involved getting him out, but then of course, once he is out, we have one person stuck down the bottom of the well again. So he is hard to get out. Okay, so the, so first person is easier to remove because we're being given a boost, okay? And then the last one is hard. 
last is always hard, always difficult. Okay, so we've had we had two stuck down the bottom of a slightly deeper well, and the, the fact that we have two at the bottom means that one of those is always easier to get out than the other. Okay, so now let's think about lithium. Okay, now lithium has three electrons. But now what we notice is that, um, okay, so first of all, the same sort of phenomenon as before, that our well is deeper again. Okay, that getting our last two men out is harder than it was in the previous one. But we notice that it seems like we have a group of one electron that's easier and then the other two which are harder. You know, we saw kind of if we thought about our graph, we had one that was like that and then two that were kind of these ones together as a group and then this one by itself. Now have a think about, before I, I walk through it, pause, in a moment I'll get you to pause the video, to think about how we could represent that on our diagram. Okay, so take a moment to pause now and think about what you might draw that might help to make sense of where, of, of you know, what's going on with that third man. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to, to have a think and have a look at it now. Um, if you just kept going, well it's a little bit lazy, but all right, so now, if I say, all right, I've got three men at the bottom of the well. Now, the thing is that then they should all be reasonably similarly difficult to get out. Now, I could, you know, two could kind of boost the first man and then the last guy could boost the second man and then the last person hard to get out. But what we would should see if that was the case is that our, our three values should be fairly in the same ballpark. But what we see is that this first one is so much easier to get out than the, ne the last two. And so what we could do to represent that is, let's imagine that our well has a ledge. Okay, and so our first man is stuck on the ledge rather than right at the bottom. So he's easier to get out than the guys who are stuck down the bottom. So he gets out, but then we have to get the guys out from the bottom. And we're back to the same situation, that one can boost the other to get out, and then the last one is stuck and, can, and is hardest to get out. Okay, but so the presence of this ledge in our analogy, helps to make sense of why we, we seem to remove electrons in two stages. Okay, and so then as we continue on, we can start to build on that. Okay, and so now if we look at beryllium, which has four electrons, okay, so we can still stick with our same um, kind of analogy. What we would see, what we saw in our, our graphs would be something like this. Okay, so we've kind of got two groups of two. So we can accommodate that in our analogy by putting two people on this top ledge. The first, now these two, the, now our, we, our well is deeper again, but this first one can boost the other guy to get out of that ledge. And then he gets out off the ledge, but he's by himself, but he's not as far down as the guys at the bottom. And then we have to remove the two at the bottom. Okay, and so in, his, in each of these cases, we've seen that the well is deeper every time, that the first person, or that the, the, when we have more than one person together, the first one is always easiest to get out than then the subsequent ones. Okay, and the last one, the very last electron is always the most difficult. Okay, now, what I want you to, to do now, well, I'm not going to go through it here and now, you're going to do this in person and we can talk about it in class, um, is now your job is to now look at sodium. Okay, now sodium, as you can check on the periodic table, has 11 electrons. I want you to have a look at the data on the spreadsheet, have a look at what the graph is. If you haven't drawn a graph of it yet, um, that would be a good idea so you can see how this kind of plays out and see if you can then make another, you know, to adjust your diagram, to draw it in your book, um, draw it in the worksheet to help explain what's going on. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.